next up, David Hayter. How about Kari Payton? He's here too. Last but not least, Jim Cumming. What's up, everybody? Before we get started, can you do me a little favor and say uh, happy birthday to my daughter, Maya? She's turning uh, 11 on, on Monday, so I'm going to turn this around. One, one, two, three, <laughs> happy birthday, Maya, okay? One, two, three. Happy, happy birthday, birthday, Maya! All right, now, now she doesn't need a present. This is awesome. All right. <laughs> All right, we're going to jump in and move as quick as we can to get through it. But like I said, I'm sorry. We're going to cut a little short. But honestly, I don't think you're going to care. All right, <laughs> scene number one. We're going to start right away. Narrated, Jim, by Richard Pryor. Uh, as Doc Brown, Kari, cyborg from Teen Titans. Okay. Booyah. And as Marty, Ross, I think we start right out with Donald Trump. What do you think? Okay, okay, yeah. Look, half of you are going to hate it, half of you are going to love it. Get over it. <laughs> Donald Trump's in the room. All right, whenever you guys are ready, start her up. Oh, it didn't the first page of, uh, Jim. Oh, oh, I don't have a first page. Yeah, this is the, the, the narrative. Oh, I got a page two. Oh, that's oh, good. Oh, We're page? starting on page oh, two. It printed wrong. Yeah, yeah. It starts on it, the first it, page. It starts on the front. There you go. This is going great. Oh, down here. Oh, right here. Oh, okay. It printed we're getting, off. We're getting off to a roaring start, everybody. The How do you like it so far? The printing was off. All right, that's good. Well, let's see. The first 15 pages of this script have Marty skateboarding his ass off all over town, grabbing car bumpers, creating havoc, and don't... Now, kids, don't do this at home. Just skip ahead to the mall parking lot. We see J.C. Penny and a one-hour photo booth, which takes uh, 60 minutes. Now, remember, those parents, oh, look at here. We also see a stainless steel DeLorean, I think it's pronounced DeLorean, sports car, <laughs> but it has been modificated. Wow, Doc, geez, a DeLorean, I can't believe it. What the hell <laughs> did you do to it? I knew you'd like that. <laughs> Grab the camera and start taping, Marty. I'll explain as we go. <laughs> Booyah! Oh, wait, hold on. It says I'm supposed to wait a beat. <laughs> All right. That was a beat. This is test number one. Please note that Einstein's clock is here in precise synchronization with my control watch. If my cal calculations are correct, when this car hits 88 miles per hour, you're going to see some serious shit. <laughs> well, there you go. Brown pushes the accelerizer button on his remote control. The DeLorean takes off. The speed of Ramus hits 88, 86, 87. Oh, it hit 88 again. I misspoke. Oh, suddenly, it's engulfing by a blinding white glow. See, white people mess up everything. <laughs> <laughs> and then, blam, it's gone as a trail of fire left in its wake. What did I tell you? 88 miles an hour? That's crazy. Temporal displacement occurred at... Exactly, 1.20 a.m. in zero seconds. Christ almighty, you disintegrated Einstein the dog. Oh, my God, you're a terrible person. I can't believe you. <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> Calm down, Marty. It's not like we raided your home. I didn't disintegrate anything, okay? The molecular structure of both Einstein and the car are completely intact, dude. Well, then where the hell are they, okay? <laughs> They're trying to save our democracy. 
The appropriate question is, when the hell are they? You see, Einstein has just become the world's first time traveler, and I sent him into the future, one minute into the future, to be exact, and the precisely 1.21 a.m. in zero seconds, he shall show up, and there will be a time machine, Wait just a like way back when Superman tried to save Lois Lane. Wait a minute, I'm unfamiliar with that movie. Wait a minute, are you trying to tell me that you built a time machine out of the most luxurious car ever, a DeLorean? <laughs> Booyah. <laughs> the way I see it, if you're gonna build a time machine into a car, why not do it with some style, baby? Besides, the stainless steel construction may flux the dispersal. <gasps> Look out! Suddenly, the Delorean reappeared right where it vanished up something fierce. And Brown approaches it and reaches for the door handle. Ooh, he touches it and jumps his ass back in pain. What, what, is it hot? Is it hot? Like Mexico? What's it like? <laughs> <laughs> it's cold. Damn cold. Like Saskatchewan. <laughs> well... Brown raises the driver's door and compares his watch with Einstein's. He's fine, and he's completely unaware that anything happened. As far as he's concerned, the trip was instantaneous. That's why his watch is one minute behind mine, or skipped over that minute to instantly arrive. Oh my God, half the audience is falling asleep. <laughs> Come here, I'll, I'll talk more about this shit. <laughs> 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 oh, God, another beat. <laughs> Here's a red letter date in the history of science. March 19th, 1955. Uh, what happened then? Oh, sure. I'll explain a little more. That was the day I invented time travel. You know, like when Superman tried to save Lois Lane? I remember it vividly. I was standing on the edge of my toilet, hanging a clock. The porcelain was wet, I slipped, hit my head on the edge of the sink, and when I came to, I had a revelation, a vision, and there was Starfire, Raven, and Beast Boy, and they were all pulling me off the toilet. It was weird. Damn. Brown point to the flux capacitor unit mounted up inside the Delorean. This is what time, this is what makes time travel possible. The flux capacitor. Bum, bum, bum. What in the hell is a flux capacitor, okay? You and never listen during the briefings. And scene. <laughs> oh, Lord. Back on the rails, we okay? All right. Move, we'll move quick. Next scene, as the narrator, Jim, Ray the Firefly from Princess and the Frog. There you go. As uh, Doc Brown, David, Sean Connery. Yes. As Ma, Ross, Brad Pitt. As Pa, Kari, Aqualad. There we go. Uh, Jim, as Sherman, Snagglepuss. And as Marty, uh, Ross, how about Michael Caine? Oh. Yeah. All right. Uh, whenever you guys are ready. Who's having fun in the back? Oh, sorry. And who is? <laughs> Just checking. Hello. Dish. Uh, oh, sorry. You are Sangal Pussy. Oh, sure. Oh, okay. Okay. You all right? Fine. Just getting ready. Sorry. Cool. This is heavy duty, Doc. This is great. Uh, does it run on regular unleaded gasoline? Oh. Unfortunately, no. It requires something with a little more kick. Plutonium. Ah, uh, plutonium? Oh, wait, wait a minute. Are you telling me that this sucker is nuclear? You're gonna blow the bloody doors off? Hey, hey, hey. Keep rolling, keep rolling there. No, 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 this sucker is electrical. But I need a nuclear reaction to generate the 1.21 gigawatts of electricity I need. Doc, you don't just walk into a store and blow up plutonium. Believe me, I've tried. Did you rip that off? Of course from a group of Libyan nationalists. They wanted me to build them a bomb, so I took their plutonium and in turn gave them a shiny bomb casing full of used pinball machine parts. Come on. Oh, I mustn't forget my luggage. Who knows if they'll have cotton underwear in the future? I'm allergic to all synthetics. <laughs> the, 
the future. So where are you going? Yeah, exactly. That's right. 25 years into the future. I've always dreamed of seeing the future, looking beyond my years, seeing the progress of mankind. I'll also be able to find out who wins the next 25 World Series. Well then, Doc, look me up when you get there. Bark, bark, bark. What? <laughs> nice. What is it, Ainy? You sound terrible. <laughs> well, Brown Train, a react with horror to the approaching pair of headlights. Oh, my God. But they've not found my me. butt. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how, but they've found me. Run for it, Marcy. Who? Who is it? Well, who do you think? It's the Libyans. Holy shit. Oh, somebody got a potty mouth up in here. The van sunroof slide open, and a man appearifies with a machine gun firing. I'll draw the fire. Doc, no, wait. So he waited, and then Brown ran to the back of his trailer, and the van screeched to a stop right in front of him. The Libyan, whoo, you know that's trouble. Shoot Doc in the chest. Doc! Oh my god! You <laughs> bastards! Told you. Marty dive into the driver door and swing the door shut. The Delarian, uh, which I used that one pronunciation before, rose <laughs> off. The terrorist is his gunner, takes aim, and the speed of Mina hits 75. Let's see if you bastards can do 90. Well, here we go, Mr. Potty Mouth. The speed on me to climb 86, 87, 88. Woo! All of a sudden, the mall parking lot is changed into an open field with a scarecrow. Woo! He's scary, yeah. The Delaria speed right through a haystack. Oh, he's going to be sneezing. And into an off barn. Oh, look at here. The stainless steel vehicular. Looked like a spaceship. A farmer's his wife and son are woven. What, what did they? They woke up. Or what, well, I would too. They entered a barn. Hey, what is it, Pa? Huh? Looks like an airplane without wings. Oh, that ain't no airplane. It's a flying saucer already. <laughs> <laughs> it's from outer space, even. Run, children. Run for your lives. Oh, hey, uh, hello, uh, wh where am I? Uh, excuse me, um, sorry about your barn. I I've seemed to have blown the bloody doors off. <laughs> Look, Pa, it's already mutated, whatever that means, into a human form. Shoot it already. Yeah, shoot it, Pa. Take that, you mutated son of a gun. Ooh, very clever. <laughs> Just as he's about to enter the barn, the Delarian thunder out there like that. The car spinning around in the barnyard. It's smashing that poop flying everywhere, you know that. And a white picket fence and takes out, oh, oh, it takes out one of them small pine trees. And you know the one that everybody have on there. Well, you know what I'm talking about. And then they find the dirty access road and access it something fierce. You space bastards, you killed one of my pines. And scene. All right. I love it. Okay. Uh, let's see. Next scene. As, let's see. As Biff, David, Homer Simpson. <laughs> as uh, Lou, Kari. How about Magneto from the X-Men? Absolutely. As the narrator, David, I'm also going to have you do Morgan Freeman. As Marty, Ross, John C. Riley. Uh, oh, David, uh, triple duty. As, as Goldie, we're going to have Werner Herzog. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> and as George, yeah. Jim, I, how about Hondo from Star Wars? Oh, All right. Give David a second. He's on triple duty Good this scene. Right. All right, who's having fun? The whole crowd at one time. <laughs> Make those people in the hallway wonder why the hell they didn't come in here and sit down. <laughs>
Thank you. Thank you. Good to be Remember, here. Remember, keep going to the website. Tell them you want us back next year. All right. All right. If you guys are ready. Let's do it. All right. The plutonium chamber light flashes. Empty. Marty hides the car and heads into town. The town square is recognizable but different. Marty notices a public telephone sign on a window. Anyone remember what that is? <laughs> he enters. Lou, the counterman, spots Marty. Hello, child. What, what you do? Jump ship? What? What's with the life preserver, boy? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about, but I just want to use your <laughs> phone. <laughs> it's in the back. Oh. Marty finds Doc's number in the phone book. For anyone wondering what that is, it's what old people used to use before Siri. Marty calls, but no one answers. Uh, do you know where 1640 Riverside is? And here I thought you went to school. <laughs> you gonna order something, boy? Uh, yeah. Uh, give me a tab. Tab? I can't give you a tab unless you order something, fool. Right. Did we just become best friends? <laughs> <laughs> um, give me a Pepsi free. Yes, I'll give you a Pepsi free, and then we can make bunk beds, and it'll make more room for activities. <laughs> Look, uh, just give me something without any sugar in it, okay? Uh, Lou gives him a look, and then puts a cup of coffee in front of him. Marty looks at the bowl of sugar cubes in front of him. <laughs> hey, McFly, what do you think you're doing? Hey, hey, I'm talking to you, McFly, you Irish bug. Are you talking to me, you little weasel biff? Hey, guys, how are you doing as if I care? <laughs> yeah. You got my homework finished, McFly. McFly. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid McFly. Wait a minute. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, well, actually, you know, I figured since it wasn't due until Monday. <laughs> Yeah. Hello? Hello? Anybody home? Hey, think, McFly. Think. I gotta have time to recopy. You realize what would happen if I handed my homework and your handwriting? Well, I'd get kicked out of school. You wouldn't want that to happen, would you? Oh, no. Yes. Anyway, not me. You know, I, I, I wouldn't want that to happen unless, of course, I could vaporize you on the way. <laughs> hey, what are you looking at, butthead? Yeah, so, uh, about my homework, McFly. Uh, yes, yes, okay, Biff, fine, 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 good. Well, I'll finish that on, um, on, uh, on, on up tonight, no problem, and then I will bring it over first thing in the morning. All right, but not too early. I sleep in on Sundays, and I don't want to see you in here again. Yes, yes, of course, and you won't unless I'm driving a big tank. Bye-bye. <laughs> Amari slowly turns and noticing that he's sitting next to his father. What? You're George McFly! Yes, yes, and who are you? Say, what do you let those boys push you around like that for? Well, they are bigger than me temporarily. Well, you must stand tall, boy. Have some respect for yourself. Don't you know if you let people walk all over you now, they'll be walking all over you for the rest of your life? <laughs> Look at me. I'm wearing a Herzog. <laughs> to remind you. Uh, you think I'm going to spend the rest of my life in this slop house? Watch out, Goldie. No, sir. I'm going to make something of myself. I'm going to night school, and one day I'm going to be somebody. I said fly, you fool! That's right! He's going to be mayor! Uh, mayor. Now, that's a good idea. I could run for mayor. <laughs> ha! A colored mayor. What, when, when did we write this? <laughs> I don't know. A lot of the mayors... The hell am I reading? <laughs> Many of the mayors have been my color. <laughs> okay. 
you wait and see, Mr. Carruthers. I will be mayor. I'll be the most powerful man in Hill Valley, and I'm going to clean up this town. Good. You can start by cleaning the floor. Mayor Goldie Wilson. I like the sound of that. And <laughs> <Insane. laughs> Me too. Hey, that was a good one. Three and one. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we're just making it happen. All right. All right. We'll keep rolling. Next scene. As the narrator, Ross, Ewan McGregor from Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> it was Ewan McGregor. McGregor. <laughs> McGregor. 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 Ewan McGregor? Ewan McGregor. Ewan McGregor. Shut up. McGregor. He's, he's a cross between Ewan McGregor and Conor McGregor. Uh, oh, okay. Fantastic. You're going to love it. The, uh, yeah. As Stella Kari, the tooth fairy from Teen Titans. <laughs> as Lorraine David, Solid Snake from Metal Gear Solid. As Milton Ross, Justin Timberlake. Okay. Oh, jeez. Oh, actually, also as Sam Ross, Matthew McConaughey. Okay. Right. Nice. And as Marty Jim, I think it's time for Winnie the Pooh. What do you guys think? <laughs> All right. I think that's everybody. Okay. Whenever you guys are ready. All right. Uh, lovely. So is everyone having a nice day? <laughs> good, good. Yes, terrific, terrific. Um, George runs out of the diner and Marty chases after him. It's very, very whimsical and funny. Uh, he finds him in a tire, creeping out on a girl, changing in the window. Very, very disturbing behavior. Uh, George loses his balance and falls into the street. As a car approaches, Marty pushes him out of the way and gets hit by the car. Later that night, Marty awakens lying in a bed. Female hands place a cold compress on his forehead. Oh, 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 oh. Mom, is that you? Shh, there now, just relax. You've been asleep for almost nine hours now. Well, you see, I had a horrible nightmare. There were woozles everywhere. <laughs> and, and I dreamed that I went back in time, whatever that means. And I'm pretty sure it was terrible. Well, you're safe and sound now, little bear. Back, <laughs> back in good old 1955. 1955? When was that? <laughs> well, well you're, you're my ma. You're my ma. No, my name is Lorraine. <laughs> Lorraine Baines. Well, yeah, but you're, you're, uh, <laughs> you're so, <laughs> you're so, um, uh, thin. Just relax, Calvin. You've got a big bruise on your head. Oh, bother. <laughs> All right, where are my pants? Boy, if I had a nickel. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't think you wore pants. <laughs> anyway, they're over there on my hope chest. I've never seen purple underwear before. Calvin. Calvin? Calvin and Hobbes is a blatant ripoff. <laughs> so, so... So why do you keep calling me Calvin, dang it? I mean, why, well, why would you do that? Well, that's your name, isn't it? Calvin Klein. It's written all over your underwear. I guess they call you Cal. No, actually, people call me, um, Marty. Oh. Well, pleased to meet you, Calvin. Uh, Marty. Do you mind if I sit here? Oh, brother. No, it's fine. It's no good. Uh, fine. Well, go, uh, well, uh, go ahead. 
Well, that's an awfully big bruise you have there. Uh, well, Lorraine tries to gently stroke his bruised forehead. And funny thought there, uh, Marty actually banged the back of his head on the cement, but she's doing the forehead. But anyway, think about it. Uh, Marty moves further back on the bed until he falls off, and... <clears throat> Lorraine, da -da 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 -da. <laughs> Are you up there, da -da 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 -da? Oh my god, it's my mother. Quick! Put your pants back on. <laughs> Stella Baines, 40 and pregnant, makes the introductions to the family and invites Marty to join them for dinner. Sam, stop fiddling with that thing. Da -da 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 -da. You know the thing I'm talking about. Da -da -da -da. Whoa, ho, ho. look at it roll. Now we can watch Jackie Gleason while we eat. All right, all right. <laughs> 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 Oh, oh boy, I'm so excited for this. This is gonna be amazing. Hashtag Jackie Wilson, what? <laughs> it's our first television set. Dad just picked it up today. Do you have a television? Well, not really, but I borrow Christopher Robbins. He's got two of, um, of, um. Two? You Whoa, you must be rich. Hashtag Kardashians, what? Oh. <laughs> Oh, honey, he's teasing you, da 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 da, da. Nobody has two televisions. <laughs> that would be crazy. Oh, bother. I've seen this one. It's a classic. And this is where Ralph dresses up as the man from the Hundred Acre Wood in space. Um, what do you mean you've seen this? It's brand new. Hashtag fresh. What? Oh, yes, it's coming back to me. <laughs> Well, I must have saw it on a, um, rerun. What's a rerun? Oh, you'll find out. <laughs> you know, Marty, da, 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 you look so familiar to me. Have I come into your house in the middle of the night and taken your tea? <laughs> Do you know my mother? Oh, you're not setting me up on that one. But I, I think maybe you do, yeah, uh -huh, sure. Oh, well then, I want to give her a call. I don't want her to worry about you, da 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 da, -da. Well, you can't. Well, well, that is nobody's home. Uh, well, uh, listen, uh, do you know where um, Riverside Drive is? Riverside? Oh. That's, uh, that's on the other end of town. <laughs> that's a block past Maple, all right? East end of town. That's way far away. Yeah. Well, uh, it's a block past Maple, is it? It's, oh. But that's John F. Kennedy Drive. Who the hell is John F. Kennedy? <laughs> Mother, with Marty's parents out of town, don't you think he ought to spend the night? I mean, after all, Dad almost killed him with the car. That's true, da 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 da, -da. He could stay in the house and I could check out his motors, da 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 da, -da. I think maybe you should spend the night. I think it, 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 it would be uh, our responsibility. Well, I don't know. I don't have pants, remember? <laughs> in that case, you can sleep in my room. Under the table, Lorraine puts her hand on Marty's leg. It's very erotic. Marty immediately jumps to his feet. Well, I gotta go, gotta bounce, so that's more Tigger, but you'll forgive me. Thank you very much. And, uh, I was uh, just, it was wonderful, it was great, and I'll see you all later, much later. <clears throat> He's a very strange young man. <laughs> nah, nah. That's nah. very strange coming from someone like me. Da, 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 da. Nah, he's an idiot. He's a damn <laughs> idiot. Comes from upbringing, you know. Parents are probably idiots too. Lorraine, you ever have a kid who acts that way? I will disown you, all right? <laughs> Lorraine sighs romantically. <sighs> And scene. <laughs> I told you, we're just going to screw you all up. That's what we do. All right. And I apologize to this wonderful man here. We must be dr giving him fits. <laughs> now you, you can all go to bed tonight thinking about snake hitting on Winnie the Pooh. All right.
<laughs> All right, and the that next lack one. Of pants. As the narrator, David Ricardo Montalban. <laughs> As Doc Brown, Kari Rafiki from The Lion Guard. As Strickland, uh, Jim Woody Allen. Strickland? Yes. As Lorraine, uh, David Al Pacino. Oh. <laughs> as Marty Ross, Jeff Bridges. And as George, Jim, how about Taz? Oh. <laughs> All right, whenever you guys are ready. As George? As George is Taz, yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it is very cold in space. Marty runs out the door to Doc's house. He convinces him he's from the future, and they figure out how to send Marty, dun dun dun, back to the future. But first, they have to set his parents up since Marty's mom wants him now, very badly. It's very Shakespearean, wouldn't you say? We cut to Hill Valley High School. Wow, man, they, uh, they really cleaned this place up. You know, the, uh, the rug really tied the room together, man. <laughs> it looks, looks brand new, man. Now remember, according to my theory, <laughs> you know, you interfere with your parents' first meeting. If they don't meet, they won't fall in love, they won't get married, and they won't have kids, Marty. Then your mother will never know your father. <laughs> That's why your brother's disappearing <laughs> from that photograph. Your sister will follow unless you repair the damage you did next. Yeah, man, sounds pretty heavy. <laughs> Weight has nothing to do with it. Well, which one is your father? Uh, that's the dude, man. As George walks down the hall, students laugh at him, and some of the boys kick him in the ass. <laughs> this is because he has a kick me sign hooked on his collar. Mr. Strickland, looking exactly the same as in 1985, grabs him by the arm. Marty is amazed. That is not Mufasa. <laughs> Maybe you were adopted? Well, that's Strickland, man. Jeez, did, didn't that guy ever have any hair, man? Well, you, come on, I'm ready. Will you, you shape up, man? I mean, you, you're a slacker over here. I, I, I mean, do, 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 do you want to be a slacker, you know, for the rest of your life? I mean, Jesus. You have to tell me, what did your mother ever see in that guy? I don't know, Doc. I guess she felt sorry for him because her dad hit him with his car. I mean, hit, 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 uh, hit me with his car, man, you know? It is the Florence Nightingale effect. It happens in hospitals when nurses fall in love with their patients. Go to it, kid! Hey, hey George, buddy, man, I, I have been looking all over for you, man. Do uh, you, 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 you remember me? I'm the dude, man. I'm the, 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 the guy, the dude who saved your life the other day, man, you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, good. There's uh, there's somebody I'd like you to meet. Uh, hey, Lorraine, man. Oh, oh, oh. Calvin. Yeah, uh, you you got a little horse and throat, or uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, ever since the seventies. <laughs> nice. Well, I'd I'd like you to meet my good friend, man, Mark George McFly. Hello, George McFly. <laughs> it's really a pleasure to meet you. Do yeah, you yeah, need yeah. that foot? Very good, very good. But, Marty, how's your head? Uh, oh, uh, good, good, man. I'm fine, yeah. Yeah, good. I, I've been so worried about you ever since you ran off the other night. Are you okay? Oh, that's the bell. I'm sorry, I have to go. Isn't he a dreamboat? <laughs> Doc, she didn't even look at him, man. This is more serious than I thought. We are not going to be able to Hakuna Matata our way out of this one. <laughs> Apparently, your mother is infuriated with you instead, infatuated with you instead of your father. 
Well, wait, wait a minute, man. Are, that that is some serious Greek shit, man. That's like uh, you know, Oedipus, <laughs> man. You know, are you trying to tell me my mother has got the hoots for me, man? The hots, <laughs> the hot tots. I read, promise I can read. You know, reading is fundamental. Yes, <laughs> precisely. The only way you're going to get those two successfully to date is if they are alone together. So you've got to get your father and your mother to interact. Well, you, you, you mean like a date, man? Yes, like a date, man. What, <laughs> what kind of date? I don't know what kids do in the 50s, man. They're your parents. You must know something, you know. Sing a song and have them play in a waterfall, you know, fall over each other. And, you know, they, then they feel they love tonight. That's how it goes. Uh. <laughs> uh, uh, what do you think they like to do together? Nothing. Oh, I God. Look, there's a, a rhythmic ceremonial ritual coming up, you know. Oh, 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 of course, man. The, the, the enchantment under the sea dance. Yes, exactly. They're supposed to go to this. That's, that's where they kiss for the first time, man. All right. You stick to your father like glue. Make sure he gets to the dance with your mother. It is time. <laughs> and see. <laughs> that's excellent. That's wonderful. Oh, it's good. Yeah, I like that. That's that's channeling. All right. Are you guys still having fun back there? Yeah? <laughs> All right. Uh, and the next scene, let's see. As the narrator, Jim, Robert Stack. <laughs> okay. As uh, Biff Kari, Bootsy Collins. <laughs> All right, baby. That guy really enjoys that. He loves it, right. baby. Uh, David. We're gonna, we're gonna, well, yeah. How about you as Marty? Let's hear your Michael Caine now. Oh. I like this. We're gonna oh, compare. No. As uh, George Ross, John Malkovich. Love it. Oh, and we have two lines as Lorraine David. How about King Shark from Flash? Okay. All right. Whenever you guys are ready. You are Bootsy Collins as Biff. Yes, there we go. That guy's really excited for it right there. <laughs> going to be so disappointed. All right, let's do it. <laughs> Whenever you guys are ready. George is seated at a table, having lunch, and writing furiously. Marty comes over and cops a squat next to him. Hi, George. What are you writing? <sighs> stories, science fiction stories about visitors coming down to Earth from other planets. Wow. Come on. So good. Get out of town. I didn't know you did anything creative. Let me read some. No, 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 no! I never let anybody read my short stories. <laughs> well, all right then, that seems fine. Well, what if they didn't like them? What if they told me I was no good? I guess that would pretty b be hard for somebody to understand. Uh, no, no, no. I mean, loud, yes, uh, but not hard, not hard to understand. So anyway, George, about Lorraine, she really likes you. She told me to tell you that she wants you to ask her to the enchantment under the sea dance. Are you serious? <laughs> Oh, yeah. All you got to do is go over there and ask her. What, right here, right now in the cafeteria? What if she says no? I don't know if I could take that kind of rejection. Besides, I think she'd rather go with somebody else. <laughs> That's just so good. Oh, God. Yes. Well, who? Uh, who? Biff. Marty looks and reacts with horror. At another table, Biff is trying to push his hands, ooh, to put his hands on Lorraine. <laughs> but wait, there's more. She's trying to push him away. 
you know, sometimes you put a hand on somebody, sometimes you push your hands on somebody. It's all about how you do your hands, baby. Come on. Come on, Lorraine. You want it, baby. You know you want it. You want to grab my base and just kind of tickle the ivories. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and you, you know you want me to give it to you. That's right, baby. Let's get funky. <laughs> Shut your filthy mouth. <laughs> I'm not that kind of shark. Oh, I don't know, baby. I've seen you swim in the water, and you do so good. You just don't know it yet, baby. You get your meat hooks off of me. <laughs> yeah, listen, you heard her. She said, get your meat hooks off of her. Uh, uh, please. So what's it to you, butthead? I mean, you know, you've been looking for a... Uh... Mr. Strickland approaches behind Marty. This is getting ugly. Biff sees him and plays it cool. Since you're new here, baby, I'm going to cut you a little break, okay? Today, so why don't you make like a tree and, you know, get the hell out of here. Biff walks off getting the hell out of there. <laughs> Lorraine looks at Marty and sighs with infatuation. George, why do you keep following me around? <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> look, look, George, I'm telling you, if you do not ask Lorraine to that dance, I'm going to regret it for the rest of my life. But I can't go to the dance. I'll miss my favorite convention in Portland. Yeah, but George, Lorraine wants to go with you. Give her a break. Look, I'm not just ready. I'm not going to ask Lorraine out to the dance, and not you or anybody else on this planet is going to make me change my mind. <laughs> and scene. Woo! Yes. <laughs> Gotta love Malkovich. Gotta love it. <laughs> oh, man. I hope you guys are having as much fun as we are. Okay. Yeah! Man. We got one more in us. Wow, we wore the guy out. We got a new one. <laughs> All right. Okay. Next scene. As the narrator, see, we're going to keep doing this. As the narrator now, let's hear Kari do Morgan Freeman. Okay. Oh, yeah. As George David, Mr. Burns from The Simpsons. Yeah. Excellent. As Lorraine Ross, Jack Nicholson. Uh, as Biff, Jim, Marlon Brando. Biff, okay. Oh, and you know what? As Marty, I think it's time that we bounce in here with Tigger, Jim. What do you think? Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, give Jim a second here. I gave him two at the end there. <laughs> All right, while we're waiting, everyone in the room on the count of three, I want to hear as loud as we can make this room so they'll bring us back next year, all right? One, two, three. Very nice, thank you. Want to make sure the promoter knows that you guys want us back. That, all right, whenever you guys are ready. Okay. That baby loved this one, yeah, yeah, too. <laughs> Now we cut to George's house at night. Apparently, Marty has broken in wearing a radiation suit and standing in George's bedroom. I remember the time that I sat in a room, tiny room, and my friend, he, he, he dug his way to freedom. <laughs> Not creepily at all. No, but he did have a lot of shit all over him, and then it... <laughs> And then it rained down, you remember. You watch it on TBS, it comes on almost all the time. <laughs> he plays his headphones on him and inserts a cassette tape labeled Van Halen. Ah, yes, Van Halen. <laughs> <laughs> Into a Walkman. In the 80s, in the 80s, that's an iPod with 20 megabytes of memory for all you kids out there. Marty presses play. 
and George awakens screaming in terror. Cut to town, cut to the town square the next day. George is running frantically, looking for Marty, much like I look for Andy <laughs> in San Juan Taneo. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Do Marty, Marty, Marty! <laughs> hey there, Georgie, old buddy! Yeah. Wait a second, hold on there. You weren't at school. What have you been doing all day, anyway? Do oh, I overslept. Look, I need your help. Uh, Smithers is gone, I have to ask Lorraine out, and I don't know how to do it. <laughs> All right, okay, now listen, keep your pants on. We're doing that joke again, apparently. <laughs> so she's over there in the cafe. Well, well, what made you change your mind in your pants, George? <laughs> well, last night, Darth Vader came down from Planet Vulcan and told me that if I didn't take Lorraine out, that he'd melt my brain, and that's also what happened to my pants. <laughs> ah... Well, let's keep this brains and pants melting stuff to ourselves, mm. okay? <laughs> okay, any old how. Uh, now, there she is, George. Now, just go in there and invite her. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> but wait, I don't know what to say. I just say anything. Give her a couple of hoo-hoo-hoos. It works for me. <laughs> Say whatever's natural-able. The first thing that comes into your mind or your brain or your head. Ooh, uh, uh, nothing's coming to my mind. Uh, oh, what a shock. Cheese <laughs> oh, and crackers, George. It's, it's a wonder I was even born. Well, what? Nothing, nothing. Nothing at all. <laughs> just get a little tiggerish humor there. Look, just tell her she, she's, her density brought you together. Better yet, make it destiny. Tell her that, that she's the most beautifulest girl you've never even seen in the whole wide world. Girls like that stuff. Go fig. <laughs> uh, what, what are you doing there, George? Do I'm writing it down. This is good stuff. We enter the cafe, where everyone is using their Visa card. <laughs> it's everywhere you want to be. <laughs> the place is really jumping. It's full of kids, like penguins huddled together. <laughs> A jukebox is playing. Marty enters with George. Um, Lorraine, uh, my density has brought me to you. What the hell did you just say? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, well, uh, what, uh, what I mean to say was Wait that... a minute. Don't I know you from somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 I'm George. I'm George McFly. I'm your, I'm your density. I mean, your destiny. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Uh, hold on right there, McFly. I thought I told you never to come in here. <laughs> well, this is going to cost you. How much money you got on you? <laughs> oh, well, I mean, a bit of a money bind right now. Uh, how much do you want, Biff? <clears throat> As Biff starts to walk, Marty shoots and bends the bullet around other people and toward Biff, <laughs> tripping him over. Everyone in the malt shop. I'm really trying to find all of the, the movies for, for Morgan Freeman right now. <laughs> Biff gets up, punches, Marty punches him, then immediately flees the, the, the cafe and runs for his life. That's Calvin Klein. <laughs> oh my God, what a dreamboat. <laughs> 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 Marty grabs a little kid and steals his wooden box skateboard. Biff and gang chase him around the, the town square. Literally, watch the movie. They need a car chase somewhere around some... They, they go around the same block <laughs> twice. It's, it's actually 
It's a, it's a, it's a tiny, stupid little point in the movie. <laughs> Seriously, four of them couldn't split up and just catch one kid on a skateboard. It's foolish. Anyway, they tried to kill Marty in their car by crushing him uh, with, a, with, a, with a truck. Oh, yes, I remember this now. But he gets away, and Biff and, and the gang are covered in manure, just like my friend, Andy Dufresne. <laughs> <laughs> you know something? I'm going to get that little son of a biscuit. <laughs> and same. All right. All right. Did you guys have fun? Yeah. We got one more scene for you. This is the last one. When we're done, please come down on the other side of the universe. It took a while to get here, but we're, <laughs> these four are going to be signing autographs. Please come over and say hi and tell them how much fun you had here. I'd appreciate it. All right. Last scene. As the narrator, Kari, King Ezekiel from The Walking Dead. Oh, yeah. As Lorraine, David, it's time for your Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> As Biff, Ross, Beetlejuice. And Jim, to close it out, is Marty, Darkwing Duck. All right. All right, I hope you guys had fun. Please tell the show you want us to come back if you want us to do this again next year, and I hope we'll be here again. Thank you very much. All right. Here we go. Over the next 22 pages, Doc starts a fire in, the, in his garage. Marty's mom hits, hits on him again, and Marty tells his dad that he's going to be inappropriate with his mom. Figure that one out. We pick back up at the dance, and Marty and his mom pull up in a car together. Hold it on right there, Mr. Man. Do you mind if we uh, park for a while? Well, all right, uh, you know, I think that's a great idea. I'd love to park. <laughs> uh, what? Well, come on, Marty. I'm almost 18 years old, you know. It's not like I've never parked before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, but you're Mike. What? The, what? Marty, listen, you seem so nervous. Is something, <laughs> is something wrong? Oh, no. No, I'm only dating my mother. What could possibly be? Lorraine, Lorraine. Uh, oh, what are you doing? <laughs> I, I swapped this from uh, the old lady's liquor cabinet. <laughs> oh, oh, but yeah, well, now you shouldn't drink. Well, I've been drinking since days and confused. Uh, why not? <laughs> well, because you, you, uh, you might regret it. Later in life, of course. <laughs> Come on, Marty. Don't be such a square. Anybody who's anybody drinks. Marty takes a, takes a sip. Lorraine lights up a cigarette. Marty spits out his drink. <laughs> <coughs> you s s smoke too? <laughs> hey, Marty, this is going to sound strange, but you're beginning to sound just like my mother. <laughs> she, she was a duck too. <laughs> <laughs> Cut to the dance, and we see George dancing. Back to the car, Marty's mom takes off her jacket, showing off a very low-cut dress. Not twisted at all. Not twisted at all. <laughs> hey, Marty, why are you so nervous? I don't, oh, I don't get it. <laughs> well, uh, Lorraine, it's Lorraine, right? Now, have, have you ever been in a situation where you know you have to act a certain way, but when you got there, you, you don't know, and, and I, I just, if you could go through with it. Oh, yeah, I know. You, so you're saying, like, how you're supposed to act on a first date. Uh, yeah? Well, I, well, I think I know exactly what you mean. Oh, really, you do? Yeah, yeah. You know what I do in those situations? What? Well, I just say, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where it gets weirder than a tiger in a zombie apocalypse. <laughs> Have you ever um, even imagined kissing your mom? I don't even need to read. Why did you, why did you write that? Just to make yep, you read Yep, yep, that's just what happened. We warned you. 
uh, you know, this is all wrong. I, I don't know what it is, but when I kiss you, <laughs> it's, well, it's like I'm kissing my brother. And I, I said I wouldn't do that again. <laughs> So uh, I guess that doesn't make any sense, does it? Oh, believe me, it makes perfect sense. Now, 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 now somebody's coming. Hey, hey, come on. You caused 300 bucks of damage to my car, you son of a bitch. And I'm going to take it out of your ass. Hey, hold him. Come on. Zack that baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right, settle down. Let him go, Biff. You're drunk. Well, look what we have here. It's like that. Ain't you. Oh, no. <laughs> You're sitting right here with me. Come on. Oh, Marty. Am I supposed to leave? Marty? Marty. Marty. Oh, sorry. <laughs> leave her alone, you bastard. Guys, come on. Take him in the back, and I'll be right there. We'll go on. This ain't no peep show, you know what I mean? Hey. <laughs> and scene. <laughs> No Big round of applause for these four guys. Come on. Thank you very much. Thank you guys very much. Please come down and say hi to them at their tables. We'll be there in about 15 minutes.